Well, hi folks, it's about time, I think, to uh, attempt to get this bed sorted out in my sort of no-dig method, as inspired by Charles Dowdy. I did it a few years ago, just because I thought, like, oh, this, this no-dig, it must be just for lazy people, so I'll dig mine over every year. And then one year I dug it over really well, and then it rained all winter and it was just like concrete, so... The following year I decided to do it that way by not digging it over, just getting rid of all the weeds first, covering it in compost, and it's never been flooded since, and I've had my best crops ever since, so works for me. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to have to do is just get rid of these weeds, they're only annual weeds, nothing serious, there's no perennials, sort of deep-rooted ones, so I'll just use my scuffle hoe, get rid of all these, I might have to put a bit of sand on my walkway because it's slippery as anything and just pull up the rest of these things like spring onions that have gone too big and stuff like that. So we'll get on and do a bit of skimming. So this is my tool of choice. The, uh, if I can get it in camera, it's called a, an oscillating hoe, it's razor sharp on the end and you just push it and pull it and it's fantastic for just skimming off, it doesn't go deep but it cuts on the pull stroke more than anything. So when the soil's wet like it is now, it, it does a really good job. So, just get on, if I don't fall on my backside. Just give it, a, give it a go, show you how simple it is. See, it just cuts through like a razor blade. And because they're only annual weeds, there's no deep root system. But it's so quick, this. Can you, if you can imagine trying to hoe this with a Dutch hoe, you just be shoving soil everywhere. But with this thing, you can't beat it. It's not hard work, but quite a long handle. You know what I mean? It just totally slices everything off. So it's a fantastic little tool. I wouldn't be without it now. <coughs> So I'll just skim all these off, I'll probably rake them up and then just compost all the weeds. And then I'm going to attack me, attack me compost bin for the first time in about three years and see what we can get out of that. So that's it all skimmed off now, so I'll just give it a bit of a, a bit of a tidy up, just rake all the skimmed off weeds. Oh. Matter if I leave a few because when I cover them with compost, they're not going to grow back. So we'll just get all this done. All right, then, folks, that's it all sort of raked off mostly. The only little bits of green are just bits of that have chopped off, so that's pretty clean, pretty nice and good to go. There's the pile of weeds, one over there, and I'll compost that. So next job is to get into this. This is about three years of compost, it's looking good, but it appears that there's been a little bit of a visitor in there, a ratus ratus, and I've not brought my shovel up today, so I can't do this today, so it may be a bit of a, it may give you a bit of a fun when I start digging in there, if Mr. Ratty pops his head out, because you know what I'm like with things like that. So anyway, that's for another day when I fetch me, me shovel up, so I'll see you in a bit and we'll get on and do the next bit. Well hi folks, it's about two weeks later, because <laughs> it's been that cold. All this has been frozen solid and in between it being frozen solid, it's been throwing it down with rain, so not really been able to get up. So I'm just going to dig some of my compost out. It's not actually a compost as you would normally have it where it heats up, this is just more like a giant worm bin really. If you can see, it's more like soil with a few bits of undigested stuff, but it's all good stuff. There's about three years worth of stuff here. I'll get a smaller shovel if I can find it. I didn't find any rats, any evidence of rats, so that's good. So, I'll just get some of this dug out. Like I said, some of it's not totally composted, but any, any bits that are still sort of whole I can just rake out when I put it on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a layer of this on first, won't be much, maybe half an inch, 
and then I'm going to put my, comp my um, potato compost on steadily away. I've got to bring all that back from home because I grew my spuds at home this year. So I'll get a bit more of this dug out and then I'll just show you how I do it. So I've got about 100 litres of my own compost there and about 150 litres of my spent potato compost. So that should be enough to do half this bed which is about three metres by three, metres by three so about 10, 10 square metres. So it's just a matter of chucking it on. So I'll chuck the spent compost on first. Sorry, not the spent compost, my garden compost because that's more likely to have any weed seeds in it. So as long as that's underneath and then I cover that with compost, that should stop any weeds germinating. So we'll get on and uh, get it chucked on. So I'll get some of this homemade compost on first. That's probably Where's a tongue because it's been out of bread. That's about half work. Just do these three. It's still slippy on this wood. Full of worms. So as you can see, it's not a great idea, not a massive amount like Charles Dowding had put on, but I don't have the facilities to make a lot of compost, and I don't trust rotted horse manure these days. So that's that, just a little bit of maybe a centimetre, I'll just give it a little bit of a, a raking out something like so that's my homemade compost though just about covers it covers the, the soil and then oh, I haven't done any work for ages any exercise what I'm going to do next, just chuck the old uh, spent potato compost on. And ideally, if you had loads of well rotted manure and stuff, you'd put that on. But really, any, any organic matter is all beneficial to your soil, gives your worm something to, to eat, pull down into the soil, and improve it. So that's that, bit of rubbish there. Uh, took the old spud potato compost on there. This will be on a bit thicker. Probably find a lot of potatoes in it as well. There's one. Yeah, I've been out for about a week. It's been absolutely fro frozen solid, probably like everywhere else. And then in between that, it's been absolutely soaking. Whoa, out of breath. Lockdown, lack of exercise. So this is the last one for this half of this bed. And what else I'm going to do with this? Oh, there's me raking it over there. Put a bit, little bit of lime on it this year. Let's just some dolomite lime, which is calcium magnesium carbonate, which will just sweeten the soil up a bit, as they call it. 
and add a bit of magnesium trace element to it. That's still frozen, look in the middle. And that bit. There we go, that's nearly done. It's a lot easier than digging it over. It seems to give you, well give me anyway, a better result. That's about it, just let it all wash in now. So that's my my take on the on my uh, no dig gardening. Like I said, a lot easier than digging it over. I'll just show you the difference. So that's the two halves. As you can see, that's the one before, that's the, the other half of my bed. And then that's me. The other half done now about an inch of organic matter on just let it wash in let the worms do all the work and that's it so that's it folks that's my take on no dig gardening that's how I prepare it for next year couldn't be easier really and I get cracking results so anyway I hope everyone stays safe and I'll see you all later hopefully see the 